If you want to stay in the same situation, then continue doing what you're doing. And you guys can get on board and go down this four lane highway and just rock it out and you don't have to have a decade of learning process. Meet people where they are. If you want to have all types of clients, be a Rubik's Cube. Meet them where they want to be met. We have to know our numbers. We have to know how much we want and then what, how many deals do I have to close to make that a reality? What I want to do over the next half hour or so is give you clarity on the items that really are going to generate money for you and allow you to do the things you want to do. So if you're not currently being coached by the people in the industry that are doing it at the highest level, then you're working too hard to get there. This is the Next Level Loan Officers Podcast with Kenneth Travis and Sean Zamano. <laughs> so, uh, so we're actually uh, Shane and I decided to do our calls to, uh, to, together today. We'll have them at twelve. We're here at Dallas. We're getting ready for our peak performers tomorrow, and uh, and we just decided that we both had a call at twelve. So let's just do them together. So that's why we changed the link at the end. And uh, so, so before we get started, like we always do, uh, guys, let's go ahead and do a check in real quick. Um, Patrick, we'll start with you. And like, just hey, like. Give me a quick check. Is there anything on this call that you need to get off your chest before we get started? It's going to distract you and maybe share a win with us uh, that you've had over between our last call and today. Um, so nothing distracts me. So there is nothing on this call that will distract me. If this building blew up, I'm with you 100%. Like, dude, I'm, I'm hitting them free throws. Everybody, it don't matter, you know? So, uh no, uh, you know, one thing, I'll be there in Dallas on Thursday. I'm, I got an Airbnb, so I'm checking in Wednesday night. Um, I would like to chat with you about that um, new branch manager agreement going around. Um, you know, we kind of chatted, but that's not for the, probably this forum, but just a heads up. Um, yeah, and just any win is I'm finishing up today is day 72 of my 75 hard so I'll be finished on Friday um you know two and a half months getting it getting it done man it's awesome dude that's dedication man yeah. how'd you do on that by the way did you get every day every single day did not cheat one day no alcohol no di no diet cheats no two workouts a day uh my gallon of water every day I've read three and I've read four and a half books in 75 days just by reading 10 pages a day. Yeah, wow. wow. What, what has that done for your life? Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's really helped in a lot. Of, like each thing has taught me something different. Like drinking the water has taught me something. Um, reading a book, right? Like, so it's really tough. The most thing is, is time management. It's not a fitness challenge. It's mental toughness, right? And just, just knowing that um, you, you, there's things that you must do. It's not like oh, I should do this or I got to do this or I, you know, it's like, no, I, I'm going to drink this water or else I'm going to start over in today's 72 days in, you know, and I'm not starting at day one again. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, and, and then, uh, you know, the things that I didn't think I had time for like two 45 minute workouts a day, I made time for them because it was a must. It was something I had to do. So I, I had to get up earlier. I had to stay later or, you know, whatever the hell it took, you know, I, come hell or high water, these things were going to get done. And they started out with 75 hard, but it became 75 routine, right? And like, that's, that's the new normal, right? I got to get up. I need to be four waters in by noon. I need to be six waters in by three o'clock you know, and just certain time slots there that I've just kind of learned to, to, to manage my time better, really. Yeah. Good stuff, man. That. Yeah. Thank you for the share. Uh, Troy, what about you, man? Um, hey, nothing, nothing to get off my chest, nothing that's interfering other than my processor walking in the beginning of the meeting, but Hey, we were having uh, technical challenges anyways, but um <laughs> Big win would be closing my biggest deal, 1.76, um, which finally got done. Um, so that that was huge. And then, you know, I'm kind of bummed that I'm not going to be in Dallas with y'all. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of that and to uh, being part of that peak performers at some point. Good stuff. Thank you for the share. Tyler, what about you, my man? 
Uh, well, it's been a, I missed, I think our last two calls probably traveling. Um, so kind of solid update for me. I've, uh, we just hired a new um, operations person and was kind of looking and recruiting for that for a little while, pretty long interview process there. Um, so he started yesterday. He's in the office right next to me today. Um, so I won't talk too bad about him. Um, and also making headway on a, a pretty good producing loan officer from Fairway recruiting to come over here. So we have a call later this week, actually. Um, so pretty excited about that. And um, yeah, personal production, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. So kind of like Troy, I just closed uh, my personal biggest deal, like 1.1 million on a VA loan uh, yesterday. So that was pretty cool. First time over a million. Um, so yeah, overall, pretty excited, excited for Thursday and Friday. I'll be there in Dallas, obviously, because it's about 10 minutes down the road. <laughs> and, um, what I'm looking for in this call, nothing in particular was just kind of checking back in, wanted to get back in the huddle and hear from everybody how they're doing, um, and get some good ideas. I like Patrick's, uh, 75 day thing. I didn't even know he was doing that. So I might start that, but I'll start it. I'll start it tomorrow because I don't want to do anything today. It's always it's always better if you start tomorrow. That's what I learned, right? <laughs> tomorrow never comes. Yeah. Hey man, let, uh, let me know if you start that, Tyler. I might be uh, I, one of my buddies hit me up. He just started it yeah, about two too. or three weeks ago. So be fun to do it as a group. Yeah, maybe fun to do as a group. So seventy-five days. Okay. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be, I need to get more info on it from Patrick for sure. Yeah, that's good. Hey, stuff. Patrick, do us a favor, man. When you, finish, when you finish that, will you drop a video in the in the Facebook group on that? That's that's awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And it, I would suggest doing it after the, the, the meetup on in this week. That way you can have some drinks with your buds because I, I won't be able to, but I've missed uh, – but that's the thing is there's always something that's going to come up that's going to distract yeah. us from our goals. There's always a birthday of why I could eat chocolate cake or there's always some, some next level event that I would love to have some drinks with you guys at because I'm a lot more fun whenever I have some drinks in me. Um, <laughs> but – I'll be good on this trip. Well, good deal. We'll, we'll do it as a group. We'll mess you up on Thursday, and then we just all start over together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, Nancy, what about you? I'm, I'm doing good. Um, business is, you know, kind of up and down. It's kind of weird. Um, I think we talked about that last time. Um, purchase business has slowed up a little bit, but I'm getting a bunch of refis coming in, so um, that's good. Uh, got a couple of problem deals, man. <laughs> Client um, went under contract for a new home. Uh, didn't have a new job here. Uh, she's moving from Connecticut to here. Uh, got her new job last Wednesday, um, but it's contingent upon her background check coming through, and they were due to close this Friday. Um, background check won't be in for maybe a month. So. Uh, yeah, we're getting creative on how to solve that and uh, trying to get the contract extension and get her to lease the property before they move in it, before they buy. But I don't know. It's It's been tough. Another big jumbo deal. Um, tough on income. You know, just it just had some really hairy deals lately, but we're working through them and, you know, just staying on track. Um, and I guess what what I would like with this and and i talked about this in the our meeting for tomorrow is i need some help you know being consistent staying on my plan because i've got it mapped out what i need to do each day but man the, the day it's funny, you just should, takes off. it's funny you should bring it up nancy we're going to talk about that today yeah actually yeah. today we'll talk actually, about it today. today yeah actually in 10 minutes and you will have it in your hand in yeah. the morning yeah so We've been working on a tool, Nancy, because you're no like you're no different than any of us, right? Like, if if we had a cure for that, there would never be a coaching group, right? Like, I mean, that's the reality. Is is like half of our problems, and Ken and I are no different. We just have different things, right? Like, if he and I recruited more or did whatever more, right? Like, it would, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like you've got to have a simple way of tracking everything in your day that that gives you your highest ROI, not mine not Ken's, yours, whatever works for you, right? So we've got a pretty cool tool we're going to share. Yeah. Great. 
Great. Uh, Devery, uh, before we uh, before we move on into that, um, so we uh, we decided to do a coaching call together today, obviously, and then uh, we were asking everyone to share um, a win with us that they've had, and then any challenges or any uh, uh, just ba basically a check in. Just give us a check in of where you're at in your business. Man, I am I'm rolling. I did uh, I sent out that recession versus. Um, housing bubble video and I actually got the full database from the people. So I had it electronically and I sent it out to 2,400 real estate agents right before, right before I went on vacation. That was dumb. You dumb <laughs> redneck. <laughs> you dumb redneck. But, but quite honestly, you guys, I, I was, I was blown away by, by the results of that. I, I did the video. I sent it out. I bomb bombed it. I had Devin shoot it out to everybody. And I literally have so many people that want to talk to me in my thing. I'm setting up appointments with real estate agents and two of them I've known for years. These are their whales. You'd call them absolute whales. So wind doesn't even describe what that did for me. Um, I didn't do, I'm doing a video probably today or tomorrow. I'm just, I'm back from vacation. I'm doing a refinance video to my past clients. I'm calling them. I've got the sheet, but you can't call them that fast. Does that make sense? So I'm going to, I'm going to broadcast this, just me being Devery, you know, telling them what I'm telling them and send it to all my past clients while I'm going through. And I know that's going to, that's, I've already told the team I, I'm late because I've been in a team meeting with my new processor and my girls. Um, but I'm inundated with refinances right now. So I said, I said, we're making hay people. We're going to stay late. We're going to make hay. We're going to make all the damn hay we can. In the meantime, <laughs> I'm setting up appointments with agents just off that freaking video. It's, it's, freaked me out. So I'm good. And vacation was awesome. And I had to pay the federales who pulled me over a hundred bucks to go. So America. America. Man. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. You had to pay him a hundred bucks. So. I was worth it. And you got 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You got a thousand. All right. So uh, give us a check in Daniel. What's up my man? Can't hear you. Can't hear you, brother. Can't hear you. No, I think you got on the wrong audio setting. That's how KT normally does his meetings. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get hit by a truck. Hey, have you guys ever reported somebody getting hit in their car? We're about to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, we'll just we'll roll with it, Daniel. And then if you can fix your audio, man, at the end, we'll have you like update that. us at the end. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the conversation that we wanted to have, you know, to change point earlier, and Nancy, to your point, you know, it's like I just need something to kind of keep me focused, keep me on the railroad tracks, keep me um, in front of the things I know I'm supposed to be doing. And so it's kind of a visual reminder because the, the the fact of the matter is is that we all struggle with time management. I don't know how many times I've had a conversation with each of you about time management and how hard it is and the time vampires that get in our way. And, and when we have a measuring stick in place to be able to measure the results, right, we have something that's going to help keep us accountable. Uh, Shane, Kellen, and myself uh, have been working on this for several months. We've been working on this for, for four months. And, and, you know, it's like anything in our business. It's always not the most important thing that we have to get done. So then it never got done until we finally just said we've got to get it done. We wanted to launch it at the beginning of, what is this, Q3. And we're a few days, we're a few days late, but we wanted to really actually launch it tomorrow at Peak Performers. But we're going to share it with you guys all early. And so, uh, so what we've got for you guys, and we're going to share, and Shane's going to uh, get into it here in just a moment. It's a, it's a time management tool. It's a way for you to stay focused on the, th the many things that we do. Nancy, we had this conversation just two weeks ago. It's not the one thing. It's the, it's, 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 it's many of the, of the, of the many things, you know, it's a, it, it, it's, it's a collaboration of all of these things that we do in consistent, that consistently over time and that you do at different seasons of your, you know, of your business. And so like things that I'm doing today in my business are not things uh, or there's things I'm not doing today in my business, right? Because of the season that I need to do, but I, you know, I'll start doing those probably in September, October, November, and December. I'll start getting back to doing some of those things. So we either slow down sometimes in the things that we do because we have to manage the business that we have and we have to stay focused on what we've got. And, uh, and so this is just a really amazing tool for you guys to be able to have and that, uh, that we're even going to be using personally as coaches 
uh, just to make sure. And and in my team, I'm going to be giving my you know my loan partner this tool. I'm going to be giving my uh, uh, you know people on my team this tool, but for them to be able to use in you know on our team in our business. So uh, Shane, you want to jump into it real quick? Yeah. So guys, a couple things. Um, one, like there's no perfect tool. It's the person who uses the tool that makes it work well, right? So. You could spend a thousand dollars on a tracker and somebody to with like actually whip your butt every day and it wouldn't matter. Um, so what we what we did what, what we really want to focus on is like there's no one person like what Devry just did. Devry just said I emailed a video to 2,400 agents and it just converted. Well, that may or may not work for you. And I think the problem with a lot of uh, coaching groups, mortgage companies in general is they say, Hey, I've got the secret: online leads. Everyone should be doing online leads. And that'll grow your business. And that might work for Patrick. It might work for, for, for Ken. It may not work for me. It may completely suck my time away. So we wanted to bring a, a tracker to you that allowed you to focus on, and, and, and not only focus, but tactically look at your analytics and understand where are you getting your money? Like Tyler, do you get your money from phone calls? Do you get your money from meetings? Like where does your money come from? Like the people who know the analytics the best are the ones who are winning. I, I was just talking to a videographer today and he said that right now analytics is like, it's like oil. It, it's, it's worth more than oil, right? If you know the analytics of your borrowers, if you know the spending habits, if you know like where Ken is able to be the most efficient version of Ken, he makes more money. So we're going to get into the tracker and we talked a little bit about the, the terminology behind it. Can everybody see that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is the Next Level Playbook, and uh, we're going to be giving you guys these for each, like an actual physical copy and a PDF for you to have for every day of every quarter of your business. And it kind of walks you through some of the things, and so we're going to just go through that right now, the terminology and, and, and kind of the, the mechanics behind it. But first and foremost, it's so imperative, guys, that you understand the finish line before you start the race. Like, have you ever, like, if a, if a track star doesn't know how far they have to run, they're going to sprint and then they're going to die on lap one of a 50-lap race. So you've got to understand the finish line before you start. And so the annual goal worksheet is, like, the, is the equivalent of the finish line. This is going to be, as you work out your numbers, it's going to tell you where, what's my profitability, what's my goal for the year, and be honest with yourself. Don't bullshit your numbers. Don't, you know, don't say, well, I've got to do what I just saw Devry doing, you know, 15 units for $4 million. I've got to do that. This is for you to earn your revenue in your business. And then what it's going to do is as you open your book, this will be on the left side. The next page will be on the right side. Like I use Outlook, but I'll tell you, I print out my Outlook counter, and I've told my group this many times. I print it out, and I actually write down everything I do, and then as I do them, I check them off the list. I have a weak mindset naturally, and so I have to give myself small victories throughout the day. And so as I'm checking something off my list, it's a psychological victory, right? And so the goal of this is to actually put out your entire day. Uh, for Patrick, it starts at like 3 a.m. Sorry, dude, we didn't go that far down the list, but visually we can only go from five to nine. Uh, and then track like your to-dos and, and, and again, your top, your top items for the day, like understanding where do you get your business and where's your focus for your day? And then did you accomplish your goals, yes or no? Like we don't need to have 97 analytics. Did you win or did you not? Yes or no, I won the day. And if you didn't win the day, and we're gonna talk about this more at Peak Performers, Peel back all the bullshit. What really held you back from winning your day? Did you quit? Did, did you make excuses? Was it too hard? Did you not embrace the challenges? Like, or, or did somebody get in your way? Did a spouse get in your way? Did a, did a business partner get in your way? What held you back from accomplishing your goals? You've got to track. Knowing where you lose will help you win more. Anybody have any questions on that? All right, this is where the rubber meets, meets the road. This is where you make your money. What we've done is we've broken your 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 activities into a couple of different groups your circle these are your referral partners now we didn't say real estate agents because for for some it might be real estate now we all know that the, the reality is all of us make a lot of money off real estate relationships is that true yeah now the reality is that ken might be really 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 good with cpas financial planners divorce attorneys a builder 
Like we have some people in our group that make the majority of their revenue from builder relationships. There's no right or wrong answer. Like whoever is like a, an influencer for your pocketbook is in your circle. Maybe you, you, you know, like I told Ken, I was like, brother, dude, you should run for office. I was like, seriously, like you should run for office in your town. Everybody knows you, right? Like he doesn't have enough to go on. Maybe it's politicians. Maybe you work with a city planner and that person introduces you to multiple people and they're in your circle. This talk session is for tracking how much you interact with your, your influencers. Now, you'll notice here we made it very, very, very simple. How many texts you did? Calls, texts. Meeting. Events and events for me is is more than a one-on-one. -on -one. This is happy hours, mix and mingles. This is brunches. This is, you know, did you have like a lunch and learn with a real estate office? Okay. Meetings are one-on-ones. Like, did you meet with one somebody in your circle? Did you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with somebody in your circle? And then videos, like Debri, like did a video to 2,400 people. I would check that as one activity, Debri. Sorry, we're not going to track. We're not going to count that as 2,400. But I would track that as one activity. Then, and, and we feel like as a group, those five things, would we all agree? If we do, so, if we do those five things every day, we win. Yeah. yeah. So like, and, and to us, those are the most important five. Now pick whichever one works for you. And as you'll notice here, there's a section for you to put in leads. So let's say I had today, I had three meetings. I'm going to check off three of those little bubbles. I had one event, I had five text messages, and I had 10 calls. Below that, I'm going to put how many leads did I get from those activities. So I did, I did 10 phone calls. I got one lead. I did five text messages. I got five leads. I did one event. I got 11 leads. You see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. Like, w without even flipping the page, you know right away in your day where you made your money. Now, the second tier is, is activities as well. These are just kind of like we feel like the top list is the non-negotiables. The, the second list is kind of like ancillary things. They, we, we feel like they have a lower ROI typically than the top five. And in these, you could put dashes, you could write a number, you could do circles. We wanted to leave it open for you to kind of write in it as you see fit. Does that everybody understand the circle? Questions on yes, that? Sir. No, okay. sir. P squared. I do have a question. Okay, Nancy, what's up? On the calls, the texts, all of that, these are all outgoing things, right? Correct. So this is not, you know, a new client calling in, you mark off a call and a lead that you got. Yeah, because Nancy, the reality is if you don't make any outbound calls, the inbound calls stop, right? Right. So we know that if like, it's almost like we know the result just by doing the work, right? Like, and, I, and honestly, that's 100% true. When I moved companies in December, for like three months, I put my head down and I got to work, like personal production work, because I knew that I would, if I did work, I would make money. Stop doing that, Ken. So I can start tickling me in the back here. So for me, I knew that if I did the work, the results would come. Right now, we're so busy, I'm hiring new staff like crazy because of the work I did three months ago. So yes, this is for outbound activities. You're going to events, you're doing things that are not coming to you. P squared. This is your past and present database. These are your clients. So these are your prospects, your pre-approvals, your current clients that you're working on active deals right now, and your past clients that you've closed loans on. You might be asking, well, these look like the exact same activities. Yes. Like, yes, like, like a real estate agent feels really good when you call or text them. A past client feels really good when you call or text them. The reason we wanted to do this in the exact same way is because we want to see <clears throat> where you get your money from. Patrick might say, hey, you know what? I did a video to my past client and it actually converted at a higher rate than doing a video to financial planners. Cool, now you know, and you might notice that, hey, you know, I called my past clients and it didn't convert well. I called my real estate agents and it worked really well. Now I know tactically and strategically, I'm gonna call my agents and I'm gonna video my past clients, right? And so the whole point of this is, is instead of having 37,000 ideas, because everyone on Facebook is an expert, you need to hone into what, what, what works for you in your market, with your mind and your body, with, with your skill set. And so with P squared and with your circle, you're going to be able to really quickly start to hone in on what works really well for you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now, we talk about working in our business. We also need to work on our business. And more importantly, and that's what Peak Performers is all about, you need to work on yourself. 
Like the reality is if you have a shitty marriage, like you are not going to be the best salesman, saleswoman that you can be. Is that true? Like if, if you're fat and out of shape, you're less likely to convert. Like if I sat down and had lunch with a real estate agent that weighed 400 pounds, my initial gut reaction is they're probably not very successful because they're not disciplined. We want to be able to track the, the work that we need to be doing on ourselves. And this kind of goes back to Patrick's like 75 day challenge. Like if you're doing reading books, if you're listening to podcasts, if you're listening to audio books, if you're taking a nap at two o'clock because you started work at 7 a.m., you're a more powerful, efficient version of yourself. Is that true? Now, here's the, here's the beauty of this. These two pages are one day. So you're going to open up your tracker and you're going to have a left side, right side. You're going to start penciling out your day. Now, you'll very quickly start to pencil out your next day and your next day and your next day. Now, you can still use Outlook. My suggestion for people like me, because I use Outlook, I live by my Outlook. The act of writing down your day from your Outlook calendar cements in your mind what you have to do. Have you ever had a meeting in Outlook that you forget about because you get busy? Like I even put like phone calls in Outlook and I'll like, I'll be like, shoot, I was supposed to call that guy 10 minutes ago and I get so busy in my day, I forgot about my calendar. So I'm going to be writing everything from my Outlook onto my day and then I'm going to be tracking everything I'm doing on my daily focus. And then the goal is to write down your top three winning moments because what you'll start to notice is, and, and Nancy, we've talked about this, Debbie, we've talked about this, we, I think we all have, your mind is, the, is the, the best tool you have and it's your biggest enemy. Like you'll have a day, like there's been days I woke up and I just feel terrible. Like my mind is weak. I don't feel good. My game is off. And it's really important to celebrate small victories every day to keep that momentum of positivity going. Now, the reality is we're not just going to track the day. We're going to break it down by the week. And we're going to start using this tracker on our coaching calls. So what we're going to have you do, and we'll give you guys instructions, is you're going to fill out your trackers. You're going to send it in to Lindsay. And then Lindsay's going to send them to us. And so we're going to know, hey, gang, big shout out to Troy. Troy did 952 text messages last week. And he got 37 leads from that. Took Troy six hours to do that. He used this amazing technology to mass text people. And he converted that into, into, into dollars. We're going to be able to say, hey, you know, Brittany has this really cool handwritten card strategy that she, do, she does in a really unique way. She got 11 leads from it. So you are going to start to crowdsource your wins into techniques and strategies for the rest of the group. And we'll be able to track it. And we'll be able to know the analytics of it. Because again, analytics is worth more than, than gold and oil right now. We'll be able to track the analytics to figure out our top wins for the week, which will convert into top wins for the quarter, which will turn into top wins for the year. And then when Nancy has a really bad day, she says, Ken, I'm off. He'll be able to reference back to where she was on and say, well, hey, when you were on, you were doing A, B, and C at this frequency, and it was converting into th this amount of business. Does that make sense? Is this cool? Will this be helpful? Yeah. Yeah. And there's there similar something I'm using now, but it's, I like this better. And, and the reality is, and, and I mentioned this before, the best tracker – only works if you actually use the tracker. If you're like, oh, this tracker sucks. Well, does the tracker suck or did you suck and not use it, right? Like that's the reality. Like my gym, I, have to, I, I work out at, I have an amazing gym. It's this YMCA by my house, it's amazing. Well, it sucks for me because I haven't gone. <laughs> I'm not going to the gym, right? So I'm not losing weight because I'm not using the tools that I have at my disposal. So that's the week, that's the week, that's the week review. And then this is the week ahead. So you can start to plan out your next week. Brittany. Did you have something? Hey. What's up, girlfriend? No, I just said, I think this is awesome. I'm excited about it. Brittany, are you driving to Dallas right now? Brent's driving me to Dallas. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We're excited to see you guys. Uh, you got the kids in Dallas? Feel... No, we are kid-free. Big old car with no kids in it. It's not a honeymoon. Ooh. Right? <laughs> hey, hey, Brent, you can thank me later for facilitating this activity for you two. <laughs> what what uh what questions what thoughts do you guys have um sharing this tool with you all we're gonna download this you're gonna send it to us how we get it uh troy take it easy man take it easy I just launched it <laughs> hey, I'm get rolling. <laughs> uh, so yeah so we're gonna do both uh, we're going to if you're coming to the event tomorrow uh you will have a physical copy in your hand tomorrow correct is that correct 
Okay. Um, and if you aren't coming to the event tomorrow, we will mail you a copy by the end of this month. Now, here's the reality too is, guys, like we're just, we're just people trying to do our best. There's gonna be feedback that you guys can give us that will help us make this tool better for you all. Please tell us. We've been working on this for months, but you know how it is. You proofread something so long that you're going to miss it. And then Kellen's gonna go, hey dude, or Ken the other day was like, hey, why don't you think about doing this? We're like, never thought about it. So mm -hmm. we're crowdsourcing this from you all to help you make it better for the next version of you. So um, Troy, we'll mail you a copy and we'll give you a PDF. So we're gonna drop that PDF um, probably tomorrow or when, when are we going to drop that on the Facebook page yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. after everybody has their coaching call, I'd say. Um, and so like the reality is that you can spend a lot of money on win by noon or all these other trackers and they're all great trackers. We just wanted to give you guys another tool and it's complimentary of us because we know that like group coaching isn't intended for a one-on-one -on -one breakdown of your business model. Group coaching is building camaraderie it's building like support through other people it's building that family so when the when, when the market sucks you got other people that you can rely on and it's for keeping each other accountable and it's hard for me to keep Troy accountable if I don't know what the hell he's doing and it's right. hard for Troy to keep himself accountable if Troy doesn't know what he's doing like how many of you know how many calls you made last week to your circle okay good and so like Nick Nancy like if you do this every week, think about like, you're going to see your results magnified. And then Ken is going to be able to like with a magnifying glass, go in with you and create these sniper tactics. And then we'll get in the Facebook group. We'll crowdsource these ideas, which I think is going to be really, really powerful. I think it's going to help everyone identify more clearly what works for them in their market. I mean, because there's a lot of things that we do sometimes that work really well for, for Devin, but not for maybe for me or for Nancy or for Patrick, you know, so it just, you know, you got to find what works. We were driving down the road the other day and we were talking about uh, radio ads and I was thinking, man, I know that radio ads would, I'd murder it with radio ads in my little small community. I just know I would, but you, you know, but I don't think Patrick would uh, in his hometown, right? Uh, I know Shane wouldn't because it's just too big of a market and it's just no one does radio out there you know? So, uh, so I think it's really going to help us narrow down each of your strengths and what's going to, and I think we will over time determine, you know, what's the, what's the, what are the activities that are most profitable for you? So. And I think too, like one thing we want to do more of, and, and we like, this is an area where we have, we have, I wouldn't say struggled, but we haven't given enough emphasis as coaches. We got to celebrate our wins more, right? Like, this is a really hard industry. Like just yesterday, Kellen and I were talking, I'm like, dude, I'm burned out, man. Like I am burned out. I'm busy. Like Debbie, like I have too much to do, not enough time to do it. For the first time in a long time, I've broken commitments. You know, when I was supposed to follow up with people because I have too much on my plate. I never, I never celebrate wins. And that's part of my problem. It's like, what's the point of making good money and doing all these things if you never celebrate? And I think this will really help us laser focus. And here's the, here's the deal. Tyler, you got a big ass team, right? Dude, you can take this tracker and we will let you uh, for a nominal fee of free, use this with your people. So like, it, like now think about this, Debra, you're gonna have a marketing admin who's gonna do a lot of these activities for you. What better way to track your admin than give them the book and say, hey, every day fill this out at the end of each week, you audit your people. Now you're not doing the task. Like if I pay somebody to dig a ditch, I don't dig the ditch, I audit them digging the ditch. Right. So this is a way for you if you have staff that you use in that 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 type of a marketing role. For for Brittany and Brent, Brent is going to be a really really pretty weather lady. Like Ken used to do this, where Ken had this person that all they did was business development, a business development person. Brent's going to be able to do that for Brittany and Brent, and they'll be able to track that really really well. Cool. So any other thoughts around like activity? And I mean, I I know I we're all really, really busy. Um, and quite honestly, like we didn't feel like it made sense to add new tactics because right now, like to Ken's point, some things that you would typically be doing, you might not be doing right now because it's a boom, it's a refi boom. And like, that means that like you might be working more than you typically would. It might mean that if, you know, you're not taking Fridays off, like, cause we're making generational wealth right now, guys. Like we really are like, and we're building the next generation of refinance people every deal we close because if you look at the charts 
it's not like this is the only time we've done refis. Like it's going to come back around in four years or five years or three years or two years or hell, six months. And the, the activities, the skills you master today, copy, paste, repeat, right? <laughs> Kellen just jumped in and here. He's been like dancing around like a little bear <laughs> trying to like entertain us. Uh, but we've been. I was wondering why you guys look so excited. Yeah. <laughs> It was because Debra jumped on the call and Brittany jumped on. I was miss I was missing their faces. So hey, guess, can you guys hear me now? I can. I can. Perfect. Perfect. Danny, what you got, man? Danny, what you got, man? Here, just getting ready to head to the to the airport. I had to stop by the office to grab something so I can start heading over to the airport and, and meet you guys. Right now, is there anything? in your in your day in your life in your mind that's that's holding you back from being the best version of danny yeah distractions time management distractions procrastinating no, one one thought i always have is like what do we because we we all deal with this right what what separates patrick from me like man if i saw a piece of chocolate cake i'm probably going to try that chocolate cake Patrick walks by that cake for 75 days and doesn't touch it. Why is Patrick able to do that? And I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, why is it that like some people are able to be laser focused on time management and Danny isn't right? Like what is that? Is it like, is it something in our DNA? Does Patrick want it more than me? Or is it maybe that like I say I want to be healthier, but if I'm really being honest, it's really not my focus. Sometimes the pain is great enough for us to make change. Sometimes the pain isn't great enough for us to do something different. It's just what it is, you know? It goes back to how bad you want something. You know, I, I kind of find that it that too happens in seasons for me. Like there are times when, man, I can be on it and I am there is nothing that's gonna pull me off of my eating plan or workout plan or, you know, phone calls I'm making or whatever. And then there are other times when, honestly, I'm going to be real with y'all. I feel like that just, you know, there's too much. And I have to really hone in on, on something that I, I need to get done. And sometimes those things, you know, I, I stop eating as healthy or I stop going to work out. And I just have to be okay with that for a while and just give myself a break because otherwise I'm beating myself up and I'm feeling like crap and that's affecting my work. That's affecting everything else. And, you know, I just lately have just said, you know what, I'm going to just be okay with, you know, doing the best I can every day and trying to push it forward. But, you know, like Danny, I feel like one of my, you know, having the tools is great, but there's the everyday distractions that, you know, stuff coming up, people coming in, calls, you know, difficult deals I'm working on that are sucking a bunch of time. That's where I feel like I'm needing more tools, more, more ideas on how to manage that, those interruptions and that kind of stuff. I mean, I got a great tracker. I love what y'all are presenting. That's really cool. But, you know, for me, it's, it's that next stage of, you know, how to just deal with the crap and, and stay focused on what I want to be focused on. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, that, that, she, she, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, she said that exactly to the, that's exactly how I feel. All right. Well, good. I'm glad you feel that way too. Nancy's not alone, but the reality <laughs> is, is uh, we all feel that way guys. Like all of us, like we all go through those mental challenges and what we have to, what we have to do, what works really well for me is just hitting the reset button. Like, man, sometimes I'll go two or three days in this funk and I have to hit that reset button. And I, and I mentally do that in my head. I'm like, okay, I'm starting over because you're not going to win every moment of every day, 365 days a year. It's just not going to happen, right? We're going to have bad, bad moments. We're going to have things that we go through. You know, we talk about seasons a lot and, uh, and yeah, we go through stuff, Nancy. It's sick. Uh, it's like it's okay and you're looking for fresher ways to do the same things right that's what you, that's what we do we all look for different that's why that's why there's a hundred thousand diets out there right people want to die but they don't want to be on the same diet every time right and so sometimes you just have to you have to you just have to know that it's okay that when we getting these 
the, when we win is when we get out of it, right? The quicker we can get out of it, the better off, the better we are, right? You have to learn how to, how to, how to course correct, right? And look at it like that. Like, like we're going down this track and then we get off track. We just have to course correct. We have to make adjustments. We have to look, okay, I'm off track. What has got me off track? And what do I need to do to get back on course? Like, how do I do that? And that's where if you can get really good at getting back on track and hitting the reset button and not, not living in your misery and not living in, in the failures that you've had, just get back on track and just be like, because there's nothing we can do to fix it. There's nothing, I mean, pardon me, there's nothing we can do to change what's already happened, right? And so, like, just don't make anything about it and just get back on track. I was talking to a loan officer uh, yesterday. Shane was with me. And uh, we had this same exact conversation kind of around tracking and time management. He needed to be held accountable, accountability, accountability and all this. And, you know, and, and from a coaching perspective, I know that he needs a tracking system, right? But there's another piece of this that, that we, that a lot of people talk about. I don't know that we talk about it a lot, but it's just like, it's just like some of us are just more passionate about getting shit done. You with me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like some people are just like, they just get it done. Like they just, they're, they're gangsters. They're just like, man, I'm going to make this happen. They jump on it. We know these people in our lives. So a lot of you are like that. A lot of you are like that. Not all of you, but a lot of you are. Uh, a lot of people, I mean, you're in coaching, you're already like levels above your peers. You know what I'm saying? But we just had this conversation with him and I'm like, dude, you just have to get to work, dude. Quit making excuses and quit living in you, in the pity pity party world of, of excuses and, and what's happened to you. Like we just, we just have to push for it guys. That's it. So yeah. you guys remember Glenn Morshower, uh, for those of you who were at our Dallas event and you know, man, that was like his macro versus micro like blew my mind. I think what we do and, and tell me if this, if, if you agree with this in business, we focus too micro on personal life. We focus too macro. Excuse me. Let me rephrase that. In business, we should be micro. Like if I make five calls a day, the macro takes care of itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. In, in in our personal life, if 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 I don't work out one day, I freak out. Like I'm never gonna work out. I'm never gonna lose any weight, and I lose. Right. So what I'm trying to say is like in my personal life for working out. If I said if I said hey, if I can lose ten pounds in twelve months, I'm winning. Because what does that mean? I have to lose a day. 0. 0.0625 pounds, I can do that. When I go macro personal, I win. When I go micro in business, I win. The problem is I think we probably do the opposite. Does that make sense to everybody? I think we focus on if I didn't work out today, I'm a failure. So I'm never and so then I don't work out because I'm a failure. Whereas if I said, man, if I worked out 60% of my year, I win. So I think we need to do a better job of saying in my business, what do we do? Oh man, I'm not making any money last year. I'm not gonna make any money this quarter. And like to Ken's point, so like what are you doing today? If you win today and you win every today, you win the year. If I go micro and I make calls, texts, emails, videos, phone calls, all of that jazz, I win the year. If I try to go too big and build this elaborate palace of technology, it never gets done. And I lose. So Nancy, I think you probably need to reverse everything. Macro, you need to go macro, go wide on your personal, and go specific on your business. And if you do that, you'll win in business and you'll win personal. You're exactly right. That's exactly what I've been doing. It, I mean, you gave the exact analogy. So I and I wasn't doing that most of this year, but I don't know the last couple of months. Um, it, it's really been, it switched on me and I've really been, you know, beating myself up a lot for not doing all those things I had on my list. So yeah, that helps. Thanks. And it, I'll add one more thing. And like, sometimes we, like what we put on our plate is our business, right? And so I think that sometimes we put too much on our plate, right? Yeah. And if you put something on your plate, if your plate's full, and you continue to add stuff to the plate, you're going to get stressed out, right? Yeah. And so I think that, that a lot of times we have to be able to know that if we're putting something on our, our plate, that we're taking something else off of it, right? right? And being very careful how we 
make commitments to things that we're doing in our business and our life and things that, you know, even personal, you know, there's things that we have going on. And sometimes, sometimes like this, this really relates for me in my own personal life. Like I'm sharing this with you guys, like sometimes like you have to just sit back and smell the roses, right. And be somewhat content where we're at. Right. Yeah. That's that. That's something that I've been learning over the last years, man. KT, just be content because for so long I've been go, 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 go more and more and more and more, bigger, bigger, better, better. And that's not the case. I'm happier now being, being less distracted with all of this shit on my plate. Right. And now, and now I'm, I feel like I'm getting more done. Like I've got four businesses uh, my, my, my four businesses. I'm busy. Like I've got a lot of things going on. Shane knows he spent a couple of days with me. He knows. And, and I talk to him every day. He knows what I've got going on in my, in my, in my life. You know, I've got a lot of things going on, but it's just being more careful about what commitments we make and, and, and scaling and delegating. You know, we scale our business, we delegate things, we put systems in place, we have tracking things that we do. And so it's okay to sit back and smell the roses. Like we don't like, it's, it's almost like we make ourselves feel this way, Daniel. Daniel, you, you, you put yourself in these positions. I know you do. And I know how you are. Cause you and me are a lot alike. Dude, we're just aggressive. We're out there. We want to get it. We want to, we want every deal that we can get. And sometimes I'm just saying like, just sit back, smell the roses. Like be content where you're at. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And I think we stress ourselves out getting to the destination and we really have to understand that like it's not going to happen tomorrow, all right? It's going to take a lot of hard work, but like I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm heading that way. I'm going there regardless. Do it on your terms. Do it, on your terms. Do it, do it, do it in a way that that works. For you. I'm, I'm going to end. I'm going to end my portion of the call with this. We got some feedback. I'm going to mute Daniel because you had feedback before. I watched a, a Netflix show called The Gentleman Drivers. And it's about highly successful people, like billionaires uh, in, in this world who race cars for fun because they're competitive people. And that, it's really, it's just a very unique story, but they interviewed every entrepreneur in their business life and then in their race life. One of the things I learned was, I, I want to leave you with this. You're going to lose. You're going to fail. Like you're going to suck at something. You're going to let somebody down. You're going to let everyone down. Embrace that. Like you're going to lose maybe more than you win, but you make your losses small and your wins big. That makes sense? Like if your losses are small, if an agent decides to not work with you and you see that they close the deal with another lender on Facebook, pardon my French, but who gives a shit? Make it small. Don't give it any place in your day. Make your losses small and your wins big. You're going to come down here for peak performers. Somebody back at your office is going to do a lot of work for you. That is a massive win. And make it feel big. If you make your wins feel big, you don't lose as much. If you embrace the reality that you are going to shit your pants in front of a large group of amazing people, it's no big deal when it happens. My problem is I hate losing and I, I, I psych myself out before I get on stage. Shit my pants. I'm going to feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but what freedom would you have Good point. if it didn't matter? What freedom would you have in your life if you knew that like somebody's going to close more loans than you this month? Somebody's going to do better than you. Patrick has a six pack. I don't. Like, what if, like, and again, I'm not saying downplay areas of weakness in your life that you have committed to changing, but just don't allow the losses to hurt you. These entrepreneurs, what was so interesting is they didn't really talk about their success. The guy who runs Patron. I mean, Patrick basically funded Patron for like a year of his life. That guy's a billionaire. He didn't talk about the win. He talked about all the times he lost. And when his dad made him like take the lowest paying job as a salesman all the areas where he lost because they embrace losing because they know they're going to learn and win from their loss. If your losses are small, you learn from your losses, you make your wins big. It's fun. It's fun. This can be really, really fun, right? Anyone have any Sounds good. Anyone want to share any uh, takeaways? Good stuff. Good stuff. I needed this.
we're going to start joint coaching every time now. We yeah. liked it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would say I would say uh, takeaway for me is is if you focus on those little things, then then the big things are going to come into play. They're going to happen, and uh, I think with that tracker, it's. I mean, that's what I appreciate about your guys' coaching is that you guys kind of see what's what's happening in your business, and you say, "I know this is happening for everybody," and you find ways to to really. Um, make that roll downhill to us so so it could uh, help our business. So I appreciate that about you guys. Thanks, Troy. Well, guys, we, we love you guys. Um, keep, like, keep your focus. Like, you know, like, Nancy, to your point, like, I know that if I don't take care of my body, if I don't sleep well, it makes it really hard to be successful at grinding through a long day. Drink tea at night. Listen to calming music. Do the things like like go out and have a really expensive glass of wine and savor that wine. Mm-hmm. Feel the sun on your face. Do those little things that make you more successful. If you make a 1% change every day in your health, in your physicality, in your mentality, you're going to, you're going to be able to grind and you'll win and everyone else will lose. And that, like Tyler is amazing at working out and running and doing these marathons. If he makes 1% changes every day, he wins and everybody's gasping, hands on their knees, and he's not tired. So, guys, just keep it up. This is a season of grind. It's a season of wealth. And, like, as you're winning, make sure that you celebrate it. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Love you guys. Love you guys. I will see some of you tomorrow or tonight.